Hi there, today I'm going to be covering the Marketo member.webinar URL token that's available in all Marketo webinar programs. Before I dive into anything in any detail, I just want to say that everything I'm going to cover here is covered in this blog post. So I'll link to this in the description of the YouTube video. So if you want to go to it afterwards, you can. In this video, I'm going to cover what the member.webinar URL token is, how it gets populated, how you can test it, and the most common reason why it might not be populating for you. The Marketo member.webinar URL token is a token that's available specifically for Marketo event programs that are synced to a webinar partner such as Zoom or GoToWebinar. And it's automatically populated by Marketo whenever someone is put in the registered status for the program. When this happens, Marketo sends the person to the webinar partner and the webinar partner sends back the member.webinar URL token that will allow this person to join the webinar using their own unique join URL. And since this member.webinar URL field is a program level field, that means that one person in Marketo can have different values for this member.webinar URL field across all the uh, webinar programs that are that they're a part of. So if you're hosting two webinars close together in time, then a person can have a member.webinar URL value for this webinar, and then they can have a different member.webinar URL value in this webinar. So that's a great advantage of having this as a program level field because one person can have multiple values um, for each program they're a member of. So you never need to worry about will this member.webinar URL field be overwritten or will it point to the wrong webinar if I'm hosting two webinars at the same time. So if you want to see what the member.webinar URL values are for people who are in the registered status for your webinar, well, then you can come into a webinar, you can filter on the registered status only, and then you can edit the view that you've selected and bring in the webinar URL field. And then you click add. And by default, it automatically adds it as the column that's the furthest to the right. But you can drag it wherever you want to put it in a position that you desire. So here we can drag it right beside full name if we want to. And as we can see, everyone has different values for this. So this just shows us that everyone will get a unique join URL when they sign up or register for the webinar. Now we get to the fun part about how we can use this member.webinar URL token within an email. So if I open up this email, we can either use the member.webinar URL token to hyperlink text within the email body, or we can use it within a CTA like a button. So in this example here, I'm going to use the what you see is what you get editor or the WYSIWYG editor. So if I click on this, I click on the chain icon, and then we can see that we just paste in the member.webinar URL token here. So that means when we send the email to the customer, this token here will automatically be replaced with the unique join URL for that person. Another option we also have is, if we edit this button here, we can see that the button link, I'll zoom in a bit for you guys. We can see that the button link here also goes to the member.webinar URL token. So once again, this will be replaced with the person's unique join URL when they go to click on this CTA in the email. And one thing you might want to consider for this email is to make it an operational email. And I think there could be just cause for this or legitimate interest because the person has signed up for the webinar and you're sending them the information necessary for them to join that webinar. So I think it meets the legitimate interest clause. Just be careful not to put any promotional marketing material in here, like contacting sales or any special promotions you're running, because then that further detracts from the legitimate interest clause. So consider making this an operational email too. And one other thing you might be interested in when you're setting up your emails is you might want to include calendar links so that people can add your webinar to their calendars. But you might also want these calendar invites to contain the person's unique join URL. If you want to do that, then you can take a look at 
this post I have, it's the Marketo Zoom integration post, and it shows you exactly how you can add calendar links for iCal, Google Calendar, and Yahoo Calendar. And each of these calendar links will contain the person's unique join URL. So take a look at that if you're interested. The next step we're going to cover is how you can mark yourself as registered in this webinar program so that you can test to see that the member.webinar URL is being populated correctly. And then when you send it to yourself in an email that it leads to the correct webinar. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either go to the database and then in the all people list, you can type in your email address. You find the person who appears. So in this case, I just put in tyronatelnext.com. You go to person actions, programs, and change program status. So in this case, we want to change their program status in the BICOM global webinar program. So if you just put in BICOM here, it'll bring in the BICOM global, and then you want to set it equal to webinar registered and then hit run now. So that's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is also by creating a smart campaign. So in here, you're just going to pull in the email address that you want to change. So in this case, it's tyron at the workflowpro.com. And then you're going to use the change program status action and change the person's status to webinar registered within this webinar. And then all you're going to do is hit run once and then run now. So that's how you can mark yourself as registered within the webinar. And then if you go to the members tab and you search for your email address, you'll see that the webinar URL value has been populated for you since you're now in the registered status. Now that this is done, we're going to send a test email to ourselves to make sure that this webinar URL is populating in the email and that it leads to the correct webinar. Okay, so now let's send a test email to ourselves so we can see that the member.webinar URL token is working correctly. I always recommend using a smart campaign to send the test emails rather than right clicking on the email and using the send sample option. The reason for this is I've had issues in the past with the send sample option where the email that was sent to me did not actually match what the end customer received. In particular, I had issues with dynamic content and links within the dynamic content 404ing. And when I sent it to myself using the send sample option, it did not show the links 404ing. However, when the customers received the email, the links did 404. So that's obviously a huge issue. And that's why I always recommend using a smart campaign to send yourself test emails because you'll always receive the email as your end customer will. So in here, it's very simple. You're just going to pull in the email address that you want to send the email to. So in this case, we carry on at telnext.com. In the flow, it's just going to be this email, which we saw from before, contains the two CTAs that are linked to the member.webinar URL token. And then we're just going to hit run once and run now. And then I'll just give this a few seconds and I'll head over to my inbox and I'll show you what this looks like. So it took a minute or two, but here in my inbox, this is the test email that I sent myself. And if we click on here, it prompts me to open my Zoom extension. So this is promising. And then we can see that the webinar is scheduled for the 26th of October. So it's obviously hadn't started yet, but when it comes to the day of your webinar and your webinar is actually live, this will lead the person straight to join that webinar. And then we can also test the other CTA. So we can click this and the exact same process will happen. It'll open my Zoom application and then we get the exact same message as before. So this is how we know that when it comes to the day of the event, the person will be led to the correct webinar. As we can see here, just make sure this matches the correct webinar you're interested in. It should be, in this case, it's the BICOM global webinar, and we can see that matches. So that's how you can rest assured that when these emails go to your customers, they'll lead them to the right webinar. And then one 
thing I want to address, and I've made a note of this in the blog post. Actually, I'll cover this point first. If you decided not to make this webinar email operational, then make sure you're subscribed to receive emails or else when you send yourself this test email using the smart campaign, you won't actually receive it because you've been unsubscribed. So you only need to do this if you have not marked this email as operational. But then the other point that I wanted to go through is why the member webinar URL token might not be populating for you. And the main reason for this is you might be using a email program nested within this webinar to send this email. And in that case, when the email you're sending is being sent using an email program, the email only has context to the parent email program and the parent email program does not have a member.webinar URL field. That's why when you want to utilize the member.webinar URL token in your emails, the best approach is to use a smart campaign nested within the webinar because once the smart campaign and the email are nested within the webinar, they have the context of all the member information that's stored within the webinar program. And therefore the member.webinar URL token will populate correctly. So the structure here in this webinar doesn't make it too clear, but in the blog post, I've got a nice image here where you want to have your smart campaign and your email nested directly within the webinar program. So then they both have context of the member information that's in this webinar program. So just be aware of that. That's probably the main reason why your member.webinar URL token is not populating. So now we've covered the ins and outs of the member.webinar URL token. What's next? So I recommend that, as I mentioned before, if you want to include join links within calendar invites, then take a look at the Marketo Zoom integration calendar links blog post, it shows you how to set up the calendar links for each of Yahoo, iCal and Google Calendar so that they contain the person's unique join URL. And then if you also want to send SMS reminders to people an hour ahead of the webinar, 10 minutes ahead of the webinar, whatever it is, you can take a look at this Marketo SMS integration webinar reminders post to see how you can set up SMS reminders for people ahead of your webinar beginning. So I hope you found this video walkthrough helpful. As I mentioned before, I'll put a link to this blog post in the YouTube video description. So you can come here and read through everything I went through in the video. And it also contains links to these two other posts on how to create calendar links with unique join URLs and also how to send webinar reminders using SMS. Thank you. Have a great day.